hello guys welcome back to another tutorial in today's tutorial we're gonna do the simple problem it's simple and procedure but uh, as we will see that the final answer cannot be obtained unless you get some help using exterior software I think this problem shouldn't appear on a test unless if you have access to like Microsoft Excel or any calculation package or mathematical package like MATLAB or Mathematica but the thing is that as we will see from this problem that you cannot do it just by using your standard calculator uh, let's take a look at the, this problem the problem basically states the 10 pound slam fixture is suspended from two springs so we have this lamp suspended from these two springs and I believe once they or when they say suspended by springs they're referring to the whole cable not only the spring by itself just to make it easier let's say it's springs each having an unstretched length of four feet so these two springs have unstretched length of four feet and the stiffness k of the spring is five pound per foot so the question is or the thing that they want us to answer or to get is to determine the angle theta for equilibrium so this lamp when hanged using this system it's going to be in a static position or equilibrium position and we will have two angles theta and since the two springs on the right and the left having the same initial length and the same uh, stiffness these two thetas should be the same so how do we attack this problem let's start by drawing the free body diagram so we know the following we know that we have 10 pounds acting downwards from the uh, where the two springs meet and we have a tension force in the first string with an angle make an angle theta with the horizon line and we have a second tension force which has the same magnitude as this first one since both springs have the same stiffness and the same length so to make it even simpler let's do it this way so we have 10 pounds t another t we want to apply the equation, the three equations of equilibrium, summation of the forces in the x, summation of the forces in the y, summation of the forces in the z. Or we, in our case, it's a 2D problem, so we need to do the summation of the forces in the x and the y direction. So we need to resolve the T or the tension forces to two perpendicular components, the x in the x direction and in the y direction. The first one we're gonna as, sh as shown in here is gonna have the x component to be t cosine theta, and the vertical component t sine theta, and the second one will have t cosine theta and t sine theta. All right. So now, to make it even simpler, it will look something like this. We have a 2D problem. We are limited to two equation of equilibrium. Okay. The first equation is summation of the forces in the x. So if we take a look at the forces in the x and try to do the summation, we will get t cosine theta minus t cosine theta equals to zero. It will never help us. All right. So we directly jump to the summation of the forces in the y direction. So what do we have? We have two of the forces which are labeled t sine theta minus the 10 pounds acting downwards should be equal to zero a little simplification will give you t sine theta equals five all right so what's next the tension in the spring t equals k u what is k k is the stiffness of the spring u is the stretched length of the spring so we need to know how much this spring stretched in order for us to know the u or basically the u we were going to substitute back into this equation should only be the stretched length the thing is that the stretch length can be calculated we already know from the statement of the problem that the unstretched length of the spring is four feet 
So what is the total stretched length of the cable? Or what is the length of the cable? The entire cable. All right. So this is just like a, an image or a, a way of visualizing this. We are looking for this U. Unstretched is on the left. And after stretching th is this. So how much it's stretched from its equilibrium position. All right, to do so, we need to get the total length of the cable. This is the image, all right? We need the total length of the cable from here all the way to here, all right? So we have this triangle, and we are solving for L. Cosine of the theta is 4 over L. The cosine of theta is equal the adjacent over the hypotenuse. The adjacent in our case is 4, and the hypotenuse is L, so L equals 4 over cosine theta. So now we know the total length of the cable. We go back, we know that U is the stretched length of the spring, so the total stretched length, we, we just calculated, which was, uh, oh, I forgot, all right, we will see it, minus the unstretched length of the cable, the unstretched length of the cable is 4, so U, L, minus 4, L, we just did 4 over cosine theta, minus 4, all right? We substitute back into the equation T equals KU, and K is 5, we multiply it by 4 over cosine theta, minus 4, we'll try to take the 4 as a common factor, so we have 20 multiplied by 1 over cosine theta, minus 1, now, from before we know from the equation, from the uh, summation of the forces in the y, we have t sine theta equals 5. So t is 5 over sine theta. So we have a t from here and a t from here. We equate them. And now we can simplify this. All right. We do some simpl simplifications. We get the following equation. Tan theta minus sine theta equals 0 0.25 can you solve this directly i mean you can just guess let me guess an angle of 45 50 60 and once you guess and try to substitute back into this equation you tr try your best to get it as close as possible to 0.225 but my strategy now is to do this numerically graphically and using some advanced solver so first we'll jump into microsoft excel and see how can we do this numerically and then we're going to use uh, wolfram mathematica to use uh, to do it graphically and again we'll use mathematica to do it using the solver embedded in mathematica all right now we switch to microsoft excel here we are in microsoft excel I created this small table. My goal is to go ahead and solve this equation right here, tan theta minus sine theta equals 0 0.25. Now, looking at this theta, it can be any value. I mean, physically, if this thing looks like this, well, maybe we are talking about something around 45 degrees. But what if the stiffness of this, of these two springs were very low that the whole lamp will stretch very down, all the way down, and this theta increases. But I know I have some limits. The th theta I'm worried about, or the theta I'm trying to calculate, is basically between 0 and 90 degrees. Okay? So let, let's start from there. What I did, I created this small table where I had theta equals 0, 1, all the way down to 90 degrees. I'm going to show you in a minute. But... I know that the solver or for the trig functions in uh, Microsoft Excel, they deal with theta and radians. So I need to change the zero to radians. Zero is the same, but one degree in radians is this. And I use the function radians. Okay. So to show you what I did, let me type it equals radians, open parentheses. I click or go to this cell, close it, and enter. Then I go here and double click here, 
and it's gonna go all the way down to my very last angle which is 90 degrees right here okay now let me calculate the tangent of this angle or tan theta so I'm going equals tan open parentheses click on this I get a zero tan zero zero okay what about the sign equals sign I go and click on the radians zero and this one equals this cell minus this cell and hit enter okay now I need to do it again for one two three all the way to 90 so the best way is just to highlight these and go to this corner right here and double click and it's gonna fill it up for me now my goal is to search in this column right here between 0 and 90 to search for a value that's closest to 0 0.25 so let's go ahead and scroll down okay we have point two three five zero five seven okay now we have one if I highlight this I go back here so it's around 43 degrees the angle I'm looking for is around 43 degrees okay but it's not quite 0 0.25000 0, 0, 0, but that's good enough I mean it's around 43 degrees okay maybe it's 43.1 or 42.9 who knows I can stop here and say well my answer approximately is 0.25 which is around 43 degrees and I can stop here uh, still since I have Excel already open in front of me what I'm gonna do I'm gonna insert a couple of cells here to move this to the right so let's say insert like this and I'm gonna take these three copy them and paste them here all right now I know it's around 43 so I'm gonna start with 42 okay and the next one is gonna be 42 or 42.1 okay let me drag highlight these two and drag so 0 0.2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 3 okay let's do up to maybe 44 like this now let's look at these values forgot to copy this one as well okay so let me copy this yeah check the equation it's i4 minus j4 i4 minus j4 correct so the my last answer was this one this was my answer before now from here to here I mean look at this 42.9 and 43.1 still 43 is closer okay so I can even study those three and pinpoint the actual angle if I want to all right just for the fun of it I'm gonna do it so let's start with 42.9 and 42.91 and let's see if we can get something out of this all right so again this was my answer as before see now it's okay all right now we have something very very close to 0 0.25 I think this is the closest so it's 42.97 again you can just stop and say it's come on it's just 43 degrees so that's a way of you know getting the solution for this one all right now I will jump to uh, Wolfram Mathematica and try to do it graphically this time so just remember it's 42.97 all right See, I'm here now, I'm going to add the note, 42.97, and this is my, the answer I reached. Okay, so let's try to plot the equation, to know, to, to, to take a look at it, like, graphically. So we'll use the command plot, and our equation is 10x, and I'm going to use the shortcut degree did I do it right okay degree 
okay because I want to do everything in degrees then minus sign of X again degrees and the domain okay since I just found out that it's between something like it's around 43 right so let's do it from 40 all the way to 45 okay so how can we do this we can go like this X from 40 to 45 and close and hit shift enter what do we get we have this graph okay so my answer is around here somewhere it's 0.25 it's right here let's uh, do some grading let's put some grids okay so we do grid lines and we do automatic for the X and automatic for the Y and let's see now oh, okay all right so I can still do even better job okay so it's 43 or 0.25 which is somewhere here there should be a straight line like this and once the straight line hits the graph I go down and see the angle corresponding what I can do now let me try to change the angle to be in between 42 and 44 oh okay so now see the point 25 appeared and this is the grid line goes like this and this point right here I go draw a straight line like this so it's not exactly 43 it's less and we got it before as 42.97 but to just graphically you can say it's 43 again I can do something I can get right click here and use the drawing tools and get the coordinates if I just hover over the graph and see this one see 0.25 is 42.97 okay so that's another way of getting the answer now let's scroll down now the third way is using the solve command I'm gonna copy the equation I don't need to type it again copy it and say solve this equation equals 0.25 comma and my variable is x close the command bracket enter look at the values it gave me it gave me x to be a complex number another x and look here i got 42.974 that's the accurate answer I'll copy this and go like this and paste it see the difference it looks something like this these are my this answer I got from Excel this answer I got from Mathematica and graphically I showed you how to get it okay so to recap we had this problem we were supposed to solve it using just a regular calculator but now we can use other tools to even come closer to the answer all right uh, I hope you learned something and uh, see you in future tutorials.